Greetings, dapplings, and welcome to another episode of Captain of Industry. In the last few episodes, we've been focused on improving existing systems with a little bit here and there of expanding the factory's functionality. But while we've been distracted with moving industries around, the whole colony has been accumulating problems. So in today's episode, my first job will be to address some of those little issues that have accrued. Consider it a bit of housekeeping. But once that's done, we'll move on to one of the last rebuilds for a little while. But this one is a big project and it's been looming on the horizon ever since we got the first version of it up and running. And of course, I'm talking about our oil refinery. The lingering temporary solution that we got up and running all those many, many episodes ago. But with our plans laid out, it's time to get down to business. So pop the kettle on, roll up your sleeves, leave a like on the video if you enjoy it, and let's get stuck in. All right then, let's get started with the housekeeping. First on the docket is to expand coal mining because we are practically done with this. Now, we're starting to push right up against this corner and that's actually something I do want to take a uh, dig into, but uh, I think we can get rid of this ramp here. We no longer really need access for our trucks to get to this area. And if they did need to do anything down here, for example, building, they can just go the long way, as I don't think that's going to be something we're going to be working on for a little while. So let's bring up the ore overlay and have a look where we can get the choicest bits of coal. I'm almost certainly just going to ignore this at this point and, and probably same for quite a lot of this i think we've got enough coal right here and by the time that we're running low on that we will be able to hit the coal seam somewhere past the enormous mountain made entirely of gold just over here and of course we've also got trades available to us as well but uh, one thing i think we will do is as i mentioned we'll just clean off this little area over here there we go oh apparently we can't get that one because it hasn't been completely torn down yet that's kind of annoying but oh well uh we will dig in there a little bit but i think we're probably getting to the point now where it is very likely that we are going to need to start in fact let me uh, get rid of that because we won't be hitting that coal uh we're going to need to start digging down around here Probably now if I'm perfectly honest. So let's have a think about how we're going to do that Obviously, we don't want to cut off access over here So this part of the coal seam is going to be secure for the time being But I think we could probably head down around here. Maybe I think that would probably be fine So let's switch this to the uh, dig mode And let's pick somewhere About here, let's say We'll make a nice long three ramp Let's go down about four tiles deep and then we will spread out just a little bit. Just enough that our excavators can get into some of that coal there. All right, that is item number one taken care of. Now, next on the agenda, we're actually starting to back stuff so much fuel gas that it is shutting down production. As much as I hate the idea of wasting something, we're going to have to just burn that off right now because we have got nowhere to put it. We're piping it all up there. It would be there if it could be. So at this stage, I'm going to say since this is the... We're giving priority to the production of power. So effectively, these are the, uh, the, the waste resources, which I don't have anything else to do with. It is time for us to go ahead and just accept that we're going to have to burn this off for now. Later on, I very, very much hope that we'll be able to set something up that's a little bit less destructive to the environment. Uh, but for the time being, we'll just go ahead and pop down two of these. Now, they're not exactly cheap, but they're also not exactly expensive either. Uh, I'm going to very strictly tell this what to expect from these. Uh, that way, at a glance, whenever I'm looking here, I'll be able to see what needs to go away. Uh, right, we're going to want some pipes, and I'll want the pipes probably branching off here. I'm going to do my usual trick of placing down... Actually, let me uh, pop that one there. Uh, placing down two uh, points like this. So that... Oh, actually, I need to bring this in from the other side because it's very finickety. It, almost as finickety as me about uh, having an exit point for a pipe. There we go. So that's going to break down the fuel gas. And we're also going to want to do something very similar for the naphtha so let's do something like this and give myself quite a lot of room there 
It's just so that I don't uh, hit the annoying... It's not even difficult to deal with, but the really annoying case where you take the effort of, um, you know, surgically removing a pipe section and then find that you're one too shy and... Uh, the frustration. Uh, right, we're going to want... Uh, sure, we can just pop this one there. I had actually thought to place it here, but I very, very stupidly completely mirrored what I was doing. You know what, I'm, I'm still going to go with that. Sod it. Uh, there we go, let's bring that up, and then this can just hop, skip, and jump over there. There we are. Now, I think we're going to need to quick deliver these materials, just so that I know that uh, the priority is set correctly on this. Otherwise, we could uh, end up going away, me getting distracted, as me is often wants to do, and then come back here to find that uh, it has been pri uh, just dumping half of my naphtha for no reason at all into the flare stack. Right, that's getting built. Could we get a truck down here? Yeah, okay, you're showing up without anything on your truck bed. That means that you are here to do the job I want. Thank you very much. All right, let's pop that there, and then connect. Oh, actually, I need to make sure that that is connecting the right way, because, again, quite finickety about directions, this game. All right, let's get that one done as well. And once all of this is hooked up, then these flare stacks will be able to take care of the excess naphtha and fuel gas. I don't imagine that we're going to have excess naphtha, of all things, really, but uh, you never know sometimes. Right, there we go. We're prioritizing output along this pipe. So this will only burn if there's nowhere for the pipe to go. Because the, uh, sorry, the uh, fuel gas to go. Because that pipe wasn't built, obviously, it couldn't go anywhere else. Now, I'm just going to make sure that that is working as intended. Oh, actually, never mind. There won't be any difference because this is full anyway. So it's exactly the same outcome. Uh, okay, well, that was one job done, or in fact, two jobs. Now, the next on the agenda... Whilst we are doing fine for delivering the diesel over here to the cargo ship uh, responsible for bringing in fuel, we're not getting any over for the wood, and that is a problem. And this is just sat there most of the time with a completely full depot of diesel, even though it doesn't really need it. On that note, let's go ahead and just send our main ship out as a uh, makeshift cargo vessel to go and grab a little bit. Now, I am thinking that we need to rejig these a little bit. I do like having the diesel generators down here, but at this point, I kind of feel they are completely surplus to demand. So we're going to get rid. At this stage, our main setup is more than capable of providing all of the power that we could possibly need. We've got a, a cap of three megawatts. I don't think I've ever seen us go above two. And that was on a very, very rare moment where it spiked because I just set a bunch of things to upgrade. And uh, so we, we emptied out a load of, of inventory of varying resources. And so there was room to build more. So all of my industries kicked into gear at the same time. But that's a very, very uncommon thing. I think we'll just play it by ear. If I do need to rebuild these diesel generators, then I will at some point. But right now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a priority for getting deliveries. You are on priority four currently. I'm going to switch that up. You're from this point on. I think we've got priority three actually over on here. Is that right? Yes, priority three because, again, this really needs the diesel. Actually, I'm going to pop that on to priority one. If, I, if this ever runs out of diesel and we run out of diesel, we're in dire times and I'm going to have to start trading for it because this is how we make more diesel. This will get a priority of three. There we go. This is going to get a priority of uh, two. I want at least one of these to be full at all times. The main base... Uh, sorry, the main ship will get a priority of five. And you are going to get a priority of four. There we go. So... This will be really nice if, if our vehicles can refuel over here. It's just going to make things so much more efficient because a lot of logistics happens over here. And having to have tankers bring fuel from all the way down here up to the furthest excavators isn't very uh, fuel efficient at all because the tankers have to use so much fuel just to get up there and to bring themselves back to pick up another load. So this should do us well for the, uh, the future there. Okay, so this one's also got double tanks there, so it should be fine. 
Uh, we should start seeing some fuel moving in down here. In fact, yes, we actually have seen some fuel moving in. Okay, not too bad. Things are starting to do well. In fact, I think we may have sent this ship out uh, a little bit prematurely there. Uh, well, I mean, it's still got quite a lot. It actually did manage to pick up 612, so that's not too terribly bad. Uh, can we do a little bit of exploring while we're out here? Uh, sure. Let's go and poke around just a little bit. Now, we're done with research. This is a little bit earlier than I was expecting. But the next on the agenda for research is... Okay, so I think we're going to go with the larger cargo docks. Whether I'm going to be able to bake this into our plans in the in the near future, or this is going to be a for the you know more medium to long term future, I don't know. But I really would like to have them available, so at least I can start planning around their size. Uh, next, after that, I would like some glass making, as this is going to be the next in the queue towards the larger trucks. And honestly, once we get to those, it's going to be so incredibly useful for us. Uh, following that, I would very much like to discover electrolysis and then on to wastewater treatment. We're going to need the ele electrolysis to be able to get the brine into chlorine since we've just finished salt production. We've already got one use for the brine and that's in the evaporation ponds. Let's get electrolysis added and then wastewater treatment. And after that, I'll, I'll just decide where we're going from there. Uh, we could go for wood alternative, but uh, we need glass to make household goods, and that's really the main thing that I would want the wood alternative for. I think using wood for the construction parts right now is perfectly fine. But that gives us quite a quite a bit of time to focus on other things before we need to worry about research. Okay, so the diesel storage has now been reprioritized, so I'm very much hopeful that we're not going to have to worry about um, gathering fuel for, or rather gathering wood for quite some time. And if we have a quick peek over here, there we go. Loads of wood has already been delivered. Perfect. Now, this is actually a good place for us to be right now because the next thing I would like to do is to upgrade the construction part uh, factories. Now, this is going to take a reasonable amount of construction parts, unfortunately. Uh, do we have many back stuff not really it's producing them fairly slowly i would very much like to upgrade this though because this takes so long but if i upgrade it i'm going to shut down the construction part so we're going to have to wait on that one um what i could do however is start upgrading another one of the uh, tier twos at least we would have tier twos available a lot of what we're building is tier twos and obviously there's battle going on here i'm not too worried about it the only thing that i would really worry about is if they manage to disable one of my guns because they're not going to get through the hit points on our battleship anymore uh, at least not this level of enemy at any rate let's see how wow this is actually taking a, a fair old while this is this is a interesting battle i'm gonna be honest i was expecting to take that this one down i do wish our our ship would be a little bit more intelligent about like you know focusing down one enemy in particular uh, we've got some pops rubber copper and more electronics and a cargo hold full of a bunch of uh, wood as well so i think it's time for us to go home that was a job well done in my opinion okay so with that it is going to take uh, a bit of time you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna wait on that one in fact i'm gonna drop down a boost we've got the unity for it so i'm gonna just bump that up a bit and we will see if we can't get enough to upgrade that first because i don't want to use the construction parts on the, the the tier two factories when really what i want to do is the tier three that's basically be, me being impatient and wanting to do something with the construction parts even if it's not necessarily the right thing Okay, the next part on our list, we're seeing this dock area starting to expand out very nicely, but I think we want a little bit more room for what I'm planning, so let's go ahead and fill this right out. In fact, I would rather them finish part of it over gradually expanding this all the way down. I'd, I'd at least like this bit finished off. And along those lines, I'd also very much like to start excavating more and more of this mountain so let's drag that back because this will make quite a lot of uh, of stone available to us as well oh what, really there's a there was a little bit of something there hmm. i must have missed that when i was setting her up last time All right let's get this out a little bit further as well there we go and 
I think that will give us quite a lot of room to play with. It is a little bit hard sometimes to see exactly where you're designating, but there we go. That's going to shave off quite a lot of the mountain side there and will in turn provide an enormous amount of material for filling out this dock section, which is exactly what I want to do next. So let me uh, remove that. There we go. Uh, we've got an excavator built, and we've actually managed to build a truck, which is fantastic. Uh, on that note, we want more excavators, and indeed more trucks. In fact, I want more, more excavators. How about we go ahead and grab another two? And, uh, I mean, another two trucks as well wouldn't be bad, though it is starting to push us up against our limit. Uh, I think with that, you know what, we're going to go all in on the excavators. Yeah, we are going to cap out our logistics fleet with excavators. Okay, so I think that's more or less everything we had on the docket there. I We're almost here. I need six more parts. That's all I require. Uh, let's go ahead and bump these up. At least... Well, I, you know what? I'm going to push all of them because I just need... Uh, sorry, five more parts. I was just looking at the six there. But once we have that, I can upgrade the assembly. Uh, three to electric and that is going to be something then that I can just trickle down the gains from that to everything else and slowly expand Everything else out as well. The real bottleneck for us is that every now and then we run out of wood And it takes a little while for that to really kick back in again Not uh, at least because we do use a decent amount of the tier one construction parts But now that this is actually flowing again, we shouldn't be struggling so much that being said Why is copper? stalled hmm are we really having that much oh we are having that much problem we're digging deep into the mountainside okay well that's a little bit of an issue let's have a look at the cop there is copper there but it's under so much rock this is always something you should keep an eye on right now we're being very inefficient with our excavators what we want to go for is the copper over here which is much more accessible than the copper over here which is under enormous quantities of of rock so we need to get copper going it isn't the wood actually that was was uh, back stuffing us i'm used to that being the reason why all of this kind of uh, chokes all the way backwards but uh, no this time it was the copper and it is in fact the construction parts uh the construction parts too but nevertheless here we go construction parts three ready and that's actually going to be the very last of all of the items on the housekeeping list so i'm uh, pretty happy with that i'll uh stall for a few more seconds damn it faster i i want to wrap up this section so we can move on to new things my lord i suppose it's okay though i'm asking a lot of you all right let's uh, take these boosts off before i run out of unity later on don't notice Okay, time for us to queue the upgrade. This is maximal priority. Please get it done. And I guess we could leave the boost for now. I suppose that wouldn't be a terrible thing. I'm not going to quick deliver, though. My trucks can handle that easily enough. Okay, housekeeping complete. Alright, and with quite a few researches under our belt, we have finished with glass making and indeed Cargo Depot 2, which was the more important of the two. And our dock largely finished. Oh no, we're going to have to watch the ship somehow miraculously not crash. Again, despite the look of things, we're actually an incredibly advanced civilization. We have mastered quantum technology. That, that ship and the rock... No, neither one was in in any way like transparent or anything. We just we just picked that one reality where all of the atoms of the ship and all of the atoms of our dock just lined up so the empty spaces were a clear path through, and the electrons didn't even didn't even get attracted to one another. It was, it was glorious. It was it was an absolute orchestra of mathematical precision. Truly, we are amazing. Why we're even still here, I don't know. We could be off, you know, harvesting energy from stars, but I guess we just like the green and replacing it with 
rock. Uh, we're not actually the good guys in this story, I've just realised. Nevertheless, back to uh, replacing the dock. Sorry for that little intro. That is never going to not distract me. The ship just idly sailing through the, the stone. But uh, back to uh, the job at hand. And that is, if you'd forgotten, that we're going to be rebuilding the refinery over here in the new dock area, which is now fleshed out enough that for, for our purposes so that we can build the uh, large expanded cargo dock down here. Now, we've got a couple of steps to this process. Over here, we've got a spaghetti of a refinery, and it is finally time that it makes good on the temporary part of temporary solution. I know it's taken a long time to get here, but we are here at last. Now, the first thing I would like to kind of lay out with our plans is to have it a clean and clear line of motion for our resources. I think this suffers very badly from that in that while there is a general flow of resources from this side to this side, it does squirrel off in weird ways. And I'd like to try and address that in our new redesign. So it's very obvious the motion of resources. And I think from that, a lot of other problems will kind of fix themselves. We'll probably still end up with pipe spaghetti. We're probably still going to have a bit of this factory here by the end of the episode. But hopefully we can lay down some good groundwork. And starting on that good groundwork, and, and again, in regards to a flow of resources, I want all of the resources to end up on this side. I don't want trucks to ever have to go down here, so we want uh, a flow of resources from the cargo depot all the way down, and we're going to have quite a few resources to pick up. Whilst I am aiming to replicate this, we're going to be making a few tweaks. We've got a couple of new techs that we're going to have to bear in mind. So, with that said, what are we going to be picking up for the trucks? We're going to have two solid items to pick up. That will be salt and rubber. We are going to be pumping water for this, and hopefully we'll be largely self-sufficient with very little need for, for anything else. It's not going to quite be there if all we're doing is replicating this, and that is we've got two distillation lines and uh, the, the requisite boilers to run them. If we scale it up later on, and we can get the oil to run it, we should actually be able to make this system largely self-sufficient about the only thing needing to be input is the crude oil and then everything else is just managed within. But uh, we're going to need salt and rubber as outputs and then for the liquids and gases we'll need diesel, naphtha, fuel gas, ammonia, acid, water and later on chlorine once electrolysis is complete. So I'm just going to throw down some pick up zones and there we go okay whilst these are all being built let's move on to the second stage we're going to need to set up our boilers now there will be two boilers but realistically the system is going to be primed for one uh, but I'm going to want few, uh, sorry uh, heavy oil to be used as a priority and then fuel gas used to top up the system where needed. Now, later on, we might want to expand that to two fuel boilers. Again, I want this to be an expandable design, but I think just, just building the, the two for now will be more than adequate. Now, you'll notice over here we're not storing heavy oil because it's never going to be used anywhere else, so we're not going to need to take this out of here. Now, I would like to give us, us a decent bit of room for setting this up, so I'm just going to use that as a guide this is going to be for the fuel gas and that's why i've put it opposite this one uh, next up we will also want some heavy oil and this can easily enough just go right there there we go and we'll set that one up for heavy oil now we will have a splitter sending a priority fuel gas down here but again i don't expect that the boiler is going to be the for the fuel gas is going to be used very often uh, next, we want to actually set up the boiler. Where are we going to find you? Is it going to be underwater? Yes, it is. There we are. Right. Now, we're going to want water and, of course, uh, fuel coming in here. So that actually does mean, uh, on that note, I do need to set up a tank for the water as well that we can set right there. There we go. And once again, uh, this one won't have uh, any import-export, and in fact, none of these will, because these are going to be used entirely internally. Though for the time being, I will allow import just so that these systems can be primed by our trucks if they have the means to. Now, let's try and make this nice and comfy, and to that end, I'm thinking... If I line it up like so, then I can have the 
wa the uh, water input on the far side, and then just have the uh, exhaust. Ah, it's not quite in the right place for the exhaust to go where I want. Oh well, let's uh, swap this around just so that it looks symmetrical to some degree, and we can have that one right there. Now the thing with fuel gas and uh, the heavy oil is they're not the same material uh, in that they exhaust different things. Uh, of course they're not the same material, hence the name. But uh, one will exhaust CO2 and the other will exhaust uh, actual exhaust. So let's set up the fuel gas one. There we go. And the reason why I expressly set the recipe is that the game then knows what to expect from the outputs. So it makes it much easier then to draw things in. So we're going to need two outputs over here. Uh, we will have, I guess, we'll just pop them both together, I suppose. The reason why I want two instead of one and having both of them pile in is because I can't guarantee that it will give priority to exhausting the exhaust over the CO2. And since if uh, the exhaust coming out of the boiler backs up, this will shut down and I want this to always have priority, I do need to expressly set up two uh, to output. Eventually we we'll want to try and capture these gases where we can. Now the nice thing about these is even across 60 seconds they're only ever going to use 36 so I don't need to worry about pipe 2s here. I can just go always assume pipe 1s. However in terms of water and between both of them we are going to need a pipe 2 to deliver there. So let's get this all set up and let's rise that up. There we go and we should be able to just connect that up. Pipes are incredibly flexible. I love the fact that they can make an elevation change in a single tile. That is not true of any of the other belts. So that takes care of our boilers and all that remains then is the output for steam. Now, as I mentioned previously, I do want a flow of items to be moving in this direction. So this would be the tail, that would be the head. But with steam, given that a lot of the items that it's going to need to be produced, the, the heavy oil, the fuel gas, the water, and the fact that I want to split the fuel gas specifically, as well as the water actually, uh, I think these make sense to have at the tail because that's where they're going to be seeing the, the most action. But what else is going to be at the tail of the process? I'm going to say the sour water stripper, definitely. The rubber maker, also definitely. Uh, we'll probably want a mixer as well for making the acid and later on we're also going to want electrolysis. So there's actually going to be quite a few devices at this side. So let me find a nice way of aligning all of these. Each one of these is only going to be a single instance of, so we're not going to have to worry about any kind of mirroring or anything to make it look nice. I just need to find a nice space for them. And after more time than I would like to admit, because frankly it's embarrassing how long it takes me to decide what's the perfect place or not, we have our tail being built. We've got the mixer, we've got the rubber maker, and one sour water stripper. Should I double the capacity of this area, then we will be using two. And I don't know how big the electrolyzer is, but there should be enough room over here since it's going to be taking brine, which is probably going to be transported down a uh, kind of pipe backbone over here. You'll also notice that I have gone ahead and I've set up the splitter for, or rather the balancer for our boilers. Now, the important thing to note here is that whilst I'm putting uh, the inputs on each side because I can then use that output. It's uh, something that I was actually clued in on by a, uh, a, a comment on a <laughs> very old video at this point. But the pipe balances, and it's true of all of them, they've got four input outputs. It, there isn't a flow. There's not a, not a um, uh, dedicated flow to them. Let me uh, set this on pause for now because we absolutely do not have the workers for it. In fact, we don't have very many workers at all. What on earth has happened there? Oh, the boilers possibly. Either way, I think it may be time for us to start popping down a colonist growth boost. I think that would probably help out quite a lot. But uh, the trick to prioritizing if you're going to be giving the inputs on both sides of the balancer is to make sure that the inputs have different lanes. Because the only way to dictate the the uh, prioritization is whether it's on the X lane or the O lane. And if you've got both pipes entering on the O lane, there is no way of telling it which one to give priority to. In our case, I want to prioritize incoming products from the X lane. 
And because we have this here, we can go ahead and hook up the very first part of the Steam network. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say the Steam will connect right there. And the Steam trunk will move straight down, I think, will be the best way to manage this one. So with that all in place, uh, we can also deal with the sulfur, which is only ever going to be going out to these two locations. Now, eventually, we're going to want that sulfur to be split. Mm, actually, on that note, maybe having that on the lower level then is not the right move, because I'm go if I have a second sour ga uh, water stripper, I am going to need to be able to pipe it into the same balancer. So with that in mind... Let's go ahead and... Actually, are you waiting on any inputs there? No, you are not. I do not believe. Let me just have a look. No, that's an output. And the only input is right there, so it should be fine for me to place the U-shaped balancer right here. Uh, collision with rubber mic. Oh, oh, is it on the, uh, the tile? Ah, my bad. Right, there we go. And we can have the U-shaped conveyor just bring this out. Now, generally speaking, I am always going to give priority to belts to have the ground floor. And the reason for that is that they need much more room to change elevations over pipes. But with that in mind, we are now going to have this pipe step up. And since I'm gonna be branching off, I may as well have that one branch off there. So there we go. That takes care of everything but the outputs on here. We're also going to need the water pipe coming in as well. I suppose uh, at this point we might also want to consider putting in the first pipe balancer. Uh, let's go ahead and pop these. And since I'm doing it, may as well do both of them. Uh, the pipe balancers in place. Actually, let's give ourselves a little bit more room. There is no reason with as much room as we've got here for me to struggle for that. Uh, that would just be very, very silly. Uh, so with that in mind, I could do something... Hmm. It's actually not as possible as I'd hoped to do something snazzy, but I guess we can do this. And I will then have, since we're going to be pro possibly pulling out quite a lot of water eventually, uh, we can do something like this and have them enter on the back side there and split up on this side. There we go. Now that is going to squeeze us in a little bit with the heavy oil. So uh, if I'm going to be trying to do something fancy, and th this is the problem, I've got all of these plans and m quite a lot of them are like, right, I do this efficiently. And then it's like, but I could be fancy though. And everything kind of just, you know, caution to the wind. All right, let's uh, hook these up instead. There we are, that'll be much better. I'll have the water, the water will be coming down here, but the pipe will curve to uh, enter the pipe balancer from the back there. Okay, so all of these are now paused so that we've uh, got population. Unfortunately, there are health issues and that is causing our population to decline. Now then, for the distillation runs, we're going to be going from one to two to three, pretty much in a single line. I will quickly illustrate how that works and then I will properly position them. So we've got distillation stage one, uh, the crude oil will be facing the back, but I'm probably gonna have steam facing from that side. And then we're going to have distillation stage two. And the beauty of this is that one simply leads into the next, into the next. Obviously, in this case, I want all of the steam to be facing the right direction. I don't know why I'm fussing over this because like I just said, I, this is basically a test run. But as you can see, one into the next, into the next, and a beautiful line there. And the, the really nice thing about it is the outputs that it's passing on to the next building are never going to be above 60 per 60 seconds, which is the throughput of a basic one pipe. So we can just have a basic pipe going from one to the next to the next. Right, give me a few moments to just set these up as well.
And there we go, the finished desalination, or well, the not desalination, rather, the distillation lanes. And at this point again, I am given pause to uh, reflect on the fact that it's just incredibly satisfying. The colors, the fact that they just get taller as they progress, I really, really like that. And look at this tidy pipework. Nothing at all like the pipe spaghetti nightmare over there, except that there is a reason for that, and that is that I've barely hooked anything up yet. Uh, this is about to all change. But before that, we do have a little bit longer to, to enjoy the clean lines because the final part of the build is, well, other than the docks, which we're gonna put in as the very last thing, is we need to set up the seawater pump and the thermal desalinator, and finally the evaporation pond heated. Now, this will probably expand a little bit in the future. Um, possibly to have a second thermal desalinator. I doubt we're going to want a second evaporation pond, but it's a possibility. Uh, nevertheless, let's get these in play, and I'm thinking... Uh, again, we want the products to be moving in that direction, although this is not going to be down here. But honestly, just because I would need to expand it a lot more to be able to fit everything in. These ponds are enormous, and we've got all of this otherwise unused space. Because if, actually, on that uh, mode, it's actually quite nice because we've got a grid. You'll notice that we've easily got enough room to double this up. And it'll only be doubled up about as far as that, because these are all single... Um, instance machines. We're not going to need to double that up, but I'll still have room to expand this out a bit later if I want to. And this will probably leave us... Let me just double check that, though, before I mention it. Uh, no, it doesn't leave us with enough room to put two of these docks, but I'm hopeful that this is going to be a big enough upgrade. It's effectively, from what I can tell, two uh, times the input there, so it should be a pretty solid upgrade for us. But back to the job at hand. Uh, we can probably comfortably fit the uh, evaporation ponds over here. And indeed, as I have now completed the research, we can build the electrolyzer. Unfortunately, I don't yet ha have the chlorine recipe, so I can't set that up correctly. But we will probably lay that down as well, just so that I have that in place. Uh, with all of that said, Let's have a little bit of a decent pipeline leading up to this, just so that I have room enough to build a second one if I particularly want to. Let's uh, pop that one there. We can kind of reserve a spot just over there. You're going to have to scooch, Milado, uh, because I am going to need to bring in a pipe too. This outputs enormous amounts of water. Uh, seawater specifically. So uh, we are going to want to uh, draw that up with a fairly high level pipe there. Over here as well, well, since I'm going to be branching off in this direction regardless, ooh. if I draw this out, all of my trucks are suddenly going to have nowhere to take their stuff. So let me just pre... Well, I'm going to allow them to finish off this, uh, this area. But uh, we will be probably bringing this pipeline over here uh, later, just to allow me to build a little bit more, because I don't want to have to use up the fairly scant amount of uh, unity I've got. In fact, on that note, let's turn that off for now. Uh, the scant amount of unity that I've got on building everything quickly. Right, so with this in play, we're going to be able to see that we've got brine on this side, which is great, and water on that side. Water can go straight up and out there and join up somewhere around there. Uh, next, we are going... Well, actually, since the electrolyzer is such a small building and will also need the brine, how about I have the electrolyzer somewhere around here. The brine is going to have to come down and be split up between the uh, the pond and the electrolyzer. Let's see. Oh, this is absolutely gigantic. Uh, if we pop that there... Well, I suppose we'd still be able to run the salt over there, but I don't think it's going to be a convenient straight line for us. And I really would like that, if I can make that happen. No. Uh, okay, well, we'll just scooch this back a little bit. It's uh, only a small loss, really, when you think about it. Let's move this back, and it, it doesn't really bear any real consequence on the game, but it matters to me. And because it matters to me, I'm going to take care of it. All right, there we go. That will do nicely. Now, we will need a splitter somewhere around here, as I mentioned. Uh, about there would do. That would allow me to split up 
the brine. Now the brine is going to be coming out at only 24 for 60 seconds. Now this setup is not built to be running continuously. I am planning for it to run out of storage. There we are. And then basically stall. We're not going to need the product of the thermal desalinator nearly as much as as uh, the well the water yes but the brine we're only going to be running these some of the time i strongly suspect that we're not going to be running them flat out if we do though we have got expansion possibilities and i can add in another thermal desalinator that being said adding one there would have been a better move we've begun construction there and that is a shame but let me just correct myself before it gets too late to do so and we can have this scooched along. There we go. It's never too late to make things better. All right, let's get that all broken down. We'll have the brine lines uh, merge along the route. Now, since they're going to be breaking that down, they'll probably be able to bring the materials over fairly easily. Now, even if this were to be expanded with a second thermal desalinator, it would still not require a pipe too so that is a small benefit to us uh, at this stage i could temporarily oh, that word uh, i could temporarily make this a very tall pipe just to get this completed and we can bring it back down to normal levels about here and then branch up and down there we go really fine well, get rid of that then. Go on, Scooch. My lord, if you just do your job, you wouldn't have gotten trapped. But this will allow the trucks to still move through there. That being said, the moment I place down the uh, salt line over here, that is not going to be the case anymore. So how about we build everything else ahead of time? Now, in the event the brine backs up, and there is a possibility of that happening... I'm going to need a way of dealing with that. Hmm. Well, one way of doing it is to give these equal priority. Uh, that's effectively what I'm I'm uh, codifying with this, if you want to think of it like that. But if I place this down, then I can at least pause its construction, and I have now locked that item in place. Then I can just hook that up. There we go. Uh, likewise, I would be able to connect up there as well. I'll do that in a little bit, though. So that gives me a much better idea of the room that we've got to play with. And uh, So with that, I'm going to set down a second pipe. And we can have an exit port. We will just pop down a quick little liquid dump. And that one can just sit about there. And should be good. All this is going to be doing is emptying out unnecessary amounts of brine into the ocean. And brine does not cause any pollution. So that's perfect for us. There we go. I'm not going to worry about the uh, a backlog of uh, water, seawater here. That shouldn't be an issue. That being said, will there ever be a, a, an issue with the brine backing up? Yes, there will. Because if the brine backs up, the water stops. And of these two... The water is the primary concern, so we will plan for that. That can just connect up there, and then in the event that it ever gets totally backed up, we can just have that empty out down here. Now this is going, they, they will complain about not being able to reach things, but it's fine. That much I would be willing to quick deliver. <laughs> there we go, so everything is in place. This is going to be paused completely. You are going to be set up for using brine, but also pause as well. I don't actually need anyone working these jobs just yet, and I don't need the power being drawn out either. Uh, likewise, this can be paused too. Okay, so the last buildings are now in place. For all intents and purposes, all that remains now is to hook up all of the, uh, the piping. Uh, that said, you have almost finished your job down here. You know what? I think I'm going to let them finish that. And when you return, we're going to have a brand spanking new dock as well as all the pipes. See you in a second.
And we're done. <laughs> Unfortunately, the cargo ship finished rather quickly, and one of the depot modules finished before pretty much anything else, so it went off and used up its starting fuel to get a single module's worth of crude oil. But uh, it's fine. Everything else is complete. And look at the glorious pipe spaghetti. Honestly, I still think it looks kind of neat, frankly, though uh, it could probably imp be improved. I've never been to an actual refinery, so I have no idea what the pipes look like there, whether they're neat and orderly or just kind of everywhere that they will fit. But you probably need a bit of an explanation on what's going on here. Well, first and foremost, the water from the desalinator, eventually both of them, is running back along this pipe in order to output over here. The whole design was made with a, an idea of the water coming from the bottom, but the, the space requirements of the evaporation pond made that a little bit difficult for us. So instead we come along here and that will mi uh, meet up with the sour water stripper and we'll give priority to the uh, reclaimed water from the sour water stripper and then uh, we'll give priority to the water over here for the steam turbines and any excess will be fed down there though that will only happen after the excess for the fluid storage is completely full i'm not entirely sure about this one and so i i put in a, a splitter there just so i could make sure that is what I want and actually thinking about it I'm not sure it is I kind of want to make sure that the uh, acid is produced first that might be a bad move we'll we'll see once the system is fully primed it shouldn't be too much of a problem but that, that one will have to be one we come back to look at now in terms of the uh, the bomb we've got the cargo ship delivering oil that then moves down these pipes into each of the distillation plants the heavy oil is then drawn out that doesn't split anyway and it moves along the bottom pipe here until it eventually goes into the boilers storage tank next up we've got distillation stage two that takes the uh, medium oil and produces diesel and light oil the diesel is being produced at a significant enough quantity that once we've got four of these once we've doubled up this system that will be too much for a single level one pipe so i'm using a level two here and because I'm having to use a level 2 at the start, I'm using it everywhere else. This gives priority to deliver diesel to the ship. Once this is up and running, that ship will get the uh, lion's share of the diesel. And then the remainder is brought up here to be picked up. Furthermore, moving on from there, we've got the naphtha and the fuel gas. At this point, we need to start worrying about being... Uh, completely backstuffed as we saw over here that was a bit of a problem and I'm using unity to keep things going whilst I took far far too long setting up all of this piping uh, but we take the naphtha we take the fuel gas the fuel gas in particular uh, goes along this route and will be given priority to leave and go be used over here where again it gets priority to go to the boiler any leftovers got fluid storage but if there is too much and it, it, there's no room for anything to uh, go down this pipe, then it gets sent to be, uh, be uh, burnt at the flare stack there. Uh, next up, we have Naphtha, which is coming out through this point over here. That, once again, if there's too much, it will go to the flare stack. Otherwise, it goes up here. And once it reaches this point, it prioritizes being fed into the rubber maker if we've already got a full inventory of rubber then it's not going to be a problem and it instead gets sent over here to be picked up somewhere now other than that we also have the desalinators which you probably remember because uh, for you it isn't so long ago but for me it is now several several hours ago uh almost a new day of recording actually uh, well technically it is a new day but yeah you know timey wimey spacey wasty kind of things i don't conform to a circadian rhythm I never even heard of the word circadian before. I just made it up. So the uh, desalinator, as I mentioned, takes the water out here, but we do have a priority to 
uh, get rid of any built up brine if we don't need it. Otherwise, it gets sent down here and gets split half and half between the electrolyzer and the, evap the evaporation pond. I haven't hooked up the evaporation pond or the acid mixer yet, because once I do that, I'm not going to be able to ask for any, uh, any trucks to bring anything over. And in fact, that's what I want right now. Please bring me some water and also please bring me some fuel gas. I'm not going to be able to get them to the heavy oil, sadly. So we're just going to have to rely on th them being able to reach these two and that will kickstart the system enough to get everything else running. Uh, we'll turn it on little by little, I think, just to try and uh, ease it into it. Now, in terms of the uh, sour water, that will uh, be delivered along this pipe, coming right from the, the very beginning. And the steam is being, as you've seen, just these large uh, tier 2 pipes which are forming the trunk of the system. Uh, finally we have the sulfur which gets split evenly between the acid maker and the rubber maker and the ammonia which once again if there's too much of it it will be burnt off though we really want to try and avoid that if we can because that is no joke. That really is not happy times. Right water hopefully on the way have we got to aqua no we do not we have more fuel gas okay well i mean we have loads of fuel gas so that doesn't surprise me too much but we should start seeing water being delivered i i hope we'll see maybe it is all fuel gas here's a water tank fantastic we have power right okay i'm gonna well i'm gonna leave that on priority one just for now until this is all kicked in now that we have steam the next thing i'm going to turn on is the uh desalinator i need that steam quite desperately down here actually uh let's allow the steam to move around i do like that the steam actually moves though it's quite a satisfying thing to watch. Okay, we're starting to see the system producing enough water now. We're even starting to produce salt, so I think it's time for us to actually activate the, uh, the distillation as well. Now, both of these should be able to pull enough steam and enough oil to generate the first layer, and that will also create some sour water. So we're going to want this turned on as well, so that can deal with the sour water that will be incoming in just a moment. There we are, and gradually we will wake the whole factory up, or rather this part of the factory, I should say. All right, let's have a look at that. We should be seeing some, if I can select the right pipe, there we are. Sour water is moving into the system, and that's going to start gener uh, creating uh, a little bit of extra water and, of course, ammonia. Next up, then, I think we can probably go ahead and activate the next stage as well. Again, there's plenty of steam in the system right now, so we should be okay. Uh, that is, there's a decent amount just kind of stockpiled in the pipes. Though we are once again out of, uh, out of fuel gas, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, right, well, if we can, turn on imports here and also keep full there we might be able to get some items sent across who knows but uh, as long as we are generating the heavy oil uh, rather uh, yeah the heavy oil over there then this should kick in in a moment there we go perfect we just needed to give it a little bit of time to actually get the the fuel down there now of course the next step is the important one because that's going to generate both the fuel gas and the naphtha so let's get those turned on and we should even see that there's a bit of diesel getting down here as well. Yeah, slowly building, uh, filling back up. But it's going to take a little while, unfortunately. And there you have it, the finished product. At least in so far that it is functionally equivalent to what we had before. It isn't better, except that uh, it is also now producing salt and is actually water positive. In fact, you'll notice some of the trucks there are collecting the excess water from our new setup and delivering it to the old setup to keep it running for the changeover to be complete. There is still a little bit of teething trouble as fuel is flip-flopping a little bit whilst uh, so much attention was taken away. The trucks are going to need a little 
little bit of time to balance out. But that is going to be it from me for today's episode. I really, really hope you enjoyed. I had an enormous amount of fun laying all of this down. As much as I complained about the fiddliness of the pipes, I actually found it quite cathartic. And I hope you enjoyed watching as well. But that is going to be it from me and from this episode of Captain of Industry. I hope to see you in the next. And I look forward to any feedback you have down in the comments below. But until next time, do take care, everyone.